Assalamu alaikum dear students today i will explain about friction friction the forces that act between the surfaces of two objects in contact with each other to oppose the relative motion when the objects are moving relative to each other are called as frictional forces so look at this picture the black block of wood and table these are two contact surfaces and when we pull this block of wood using a newton balance it's in relative motion so when the objects are moving relative to each other here when we pull this block of wood using a newton balance block of wood move relative to the table so when there is when there are two surfaces contact with each other when there is a relative motion there is an op opposing force that opposing force is known as frictional force or there is a oppos opposing force that opposing force is known as uh, frictional force so what is friction the forces that act between the two surfaces which in contact with each other to oppose the relative motion when the objects are moving relative to each other so in another word we can say the forces that act between the surfaces of two objects in contact with each other to oppose the oppose the tendency to move objects have a tendency to move relative to each other that mean when we pull this uh, block of wood using newton balance it can it has a tendency to move in one direction but table table try to move or try to oppose that motion in opposite so that is frictional force so there are three categories in friction static friction limiting friction and dynamic friction so what is static friction so that is the frictional force that act when there is no relative motion even though a force is applied on the body now look at this picture so this is imagine as a block of wood force applied on even though a force is applied on the body now in here we are exerting a force 10 newton but no relative motion that object or the block of wood does not move no relative motion so what the reason for uh, no movement of this uh, object is when we exert 10 newton force the table also exert a force on this block of wood opposite to the force exerted by us so that opposing force is called as static friction why object or this block of wood is not it's not in movement no any movement but there is a frictional force even though a force is applied on the body so that is known as frictional static friction limiting friction the frictional forces that act on a body as it just begins to move this force includes the small additional force that is necessary to give it a velocity. For example, if I exert 15 Newton force on this block of wood, the table exert 15 Newton force opposite to the force exerted by us, but in this movement, this object just begins to move. So that is limiting friction. But when we increase the force 15 Newton, if we increase the force than the 15 Newton, the table cannot exceed this limit or table cannot increase the frictional force than this limit. So that's why we call it as a limiting friction. Now dynamic friction. So the frictional forces that act on the bodies when they are in relative motion. Now we are pushing this block of wood along the table it is start to move 
it's, it's moving now so that is we call it as a dynamic dynamic friction because it's moving now in this moment we are exerting 16 newton force in one direction but table cannot exceed the limit certain limit of uh, frictional force so now the object is begins to move because 16 newton is in one direction another or in opposite direction 14 newton so because of the net force it start to move so these are the three types of friction static friction dynamic fric uh, limiting friction and dynamic friction okay i can explain these three types of uh, friction using this example look at this picture or look at this instance uh, where a table needs to move along a horizontal flow so first instance when we exert a very small force table might not move imagine we are exerting 5 newton in one direction flow exert a force on table opposite to the force exerted by us that is 5 newton so table does not move because the magnitude of two forces are equal so it is cancel out now slightly increase so in this moment the frictional force this 5 newton force we can call it as a static friction so if we slightly increase the force in this moment also table might not move we are exerting 10 newton force so flow can exert 10 newton force opposite to the force which we given giving given to table so now frictional force is 10 newton but table does not move so 10 newton that one known so static friction why we know static friction mean that is the friction where uh, the it, where it is act when there is no relative motion now look at the third instance if we keep on increasing force table will begins to move we know begins to move mean in that moment the frictional force act on the body that is known as limiting friction so now we are exerting force or we are giving a force to table uh, imagine as a 15 newton and flow exert a force opposite to the force which we exert that one also 15 newton but in this moment table just begins to move so this friction is known as limiting friction now in fourth instance when the force that we apply exceeds the limit unbalanced exceeds the limit so this is the limit of fric uh, li limiting friction or this is the limit of opposing force so when the force that we apply exceeds the f this friction limiting friction the unbalanced force act on the table and it's it start to move so when the force act when the force that we apply exceeds the limit there may be unbalanced force there is an unbalanced force and it start the motion of table now uh, we are exerting 16 newton force but the table uh, flow cannot exert a force beyond or the than the 5 newton so the now the dynamic friction is 14 newton so it start to move now so imagine three instances it's not moving when we exert a force table does not move on table second one it just begins to move third start to move it's moving so in first in first and second these two cases we can call this uh, friction as a static friction and this is dynamic friction but you should remember the dynamic this, this is limiting friction and you should remember dynamic friction will uh, smaller than the limiting friction okay look at this graph so there is an object 100 newton so you can learn static friction limiting friction and dynamic friction using this graph so look at this in x exits it's given applied force the force which we exerted by us and we know frictional force that is in opposite direction which is exerted by flow 
on any object or flow or table by any object in opposite direction. Uh, friction, so in y-axis is given friction, resistance, frictional force or resistant force that is in Newton, both are in Newton. Now look at this. In When we exert 10 Newton force, the object does not move, so static friction also 10 Newton. When we exert a force 20 Newton, in that moment also object does not move, now static friction is 20 Newton. Now we are increasing the force 30 Newton, but in that moment also it's not moving, object not moving, so the static friction now 30 Newton. When we exert 40 Newton force, in that moment also object cannot move, so now static friction is 40 Newton. That means static friction is increasing when we exert a force on a body. That means when we exert a force, if the object does not move, that opposing force or frictional force balance the force which we exerted by us. Now look at this, in when we exert 50 Newton force, in that moment also object in that moment, that is the maximum point, so beyond the 50 Newton, beyond this limit, the frictional force cannot increase. So now we can call it as a limiting friction, why? Beyond that limit, opposite opposing force cannot increase. So until 49, 49 Newton we can call it as a static friction but when it is 50 Newton the object begins to move that means that is limiting friction. But you should remember dynamic friction is also little lower than the limiting friction. So when we exert then the uh, this limit, then this limit, objects start to move. So that is dynamic friction. So this is the graph for indicating static friction. So zero to a, zero to a. So this is in uh, indicate static friction. That means in this point, this point, this point also static friction gradually increases until limiting friction. So limiting friction means beyond that limit cannot exceed the uh, frictional force than the uh, force exerted by us. And so this instance we can call it as a dynamic friction. Okay, now let us consider the factors affecting limiting frictional force. So the factor is first one nature of the surface so what will happen according to the nature of the surface so look at this picture in first instance smooth surface in second instance rough surface so in smooth surface we know we can easily push any object but in rough surface we should give more force to push the object the reason is in smooth surface, in smooth surface low friction act on the object but in rough surface high friction act on the object. So according to the nature of the surface limiting friction force there is different. So nature of the surface that is one factor which affect limiting frictional force. So in smooth surface we should give small push or small force because of the low friction but in rough surface we have to give big force because of the high friction. Second factor is perpendicular normal reaction. So before we learn about this we should know what is perpendicular normal reaction. So normal force is always perpendicular to the surface of object that mean when we kept any object in any surface we should know the weight of the we have learned the weight weight always act downwards to the uh, object why because we know weight mean that is the uh, force force exerted by gravity gravitational force due to that only weight act on act on a body so weight always in downward and 
there is an opposite force uh, opposite force to weight that that is called as normal force the symbol of normal force is r so that is the perpendicular reaction now let us cons uh, consider how this normal reaction affect the uh, limiting frictional force okay look at this picture in first one the 50 newton the weight of this object is 50 newton and uh, the so the normal reaction also 50 newton so weight also at always act in downward a normal reaction act in upward so to push to, to move this we should give 50 newton force but the uh, there are two objects so the weight of this objects 100 newton acting in downward so the normal reaction act that is 100 newton upward so we should give more force to move this object and in this one there are three cubes this one one cube two cubes th three cubes so the weight of this th this three cubes that is 150 newton so perpendicular normal reaction is 150 newton so to move this we have to increase the force so when the perpendicular normal reaction increases perpendicular normal reaction increases the frictional force also increases why that's why we should give more force to move this object so you should remember the factor perpendicular normal reaction that one affect the limiting frictional force and when normal reaction increases limiting frictional force also increases okay now consider the surface area limiting frictional force limiting frictional force does not depend on the surface area so look at these three pictures same object but the surface area which is contact with other object or other sur surface is different in this one the surface is contact with other object or other surfaces is opposite to a in this one opposite to b this one opposite to c so both these three instances are the in these three instances the three different surfaces are contact with other surface but to move this we should give same value of uh, force so the frictional force limiting frictional force does not depend on the surface area limiting frictional force depends on uh, first one uh, nature of the surface and second one normal reaction but limiting frictional force does not depend on the surface area